Let's talk about race, baby. <laughs> I didn't think, gonna... <laughs> think you're gonna do that. I didn't think you're gonna do that. Let's talk about race, baby. Let's talk about, Let's Let's talk talk about, about race, baby. baby. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about you and me. me. Let's talk about all, all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about race. Let's talk about race, baby. Who don't have a root? And just some weird thing. Like, get in. Okay. okay. We're As back. promised, <clears throat> we're giving you our video on our ethnic background, which is 25% Japanese. Which is Asian, of the Asian persuasion. Yep. So? Sometimes I don't look like it, I know. But what if I go, oh, 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 and maybe, or maybe in the eyes, but she yeah, looks more. Definitely in my eyes, I have these really small squinty eyes, mm -hmm. and they come in the center, they kind of slant downwards to a point. Michael has that too. Mm -hmm. But he looks less Asian than I do. Yeah. And my sister looks completely Caucasian, so does my brother. So yeah, people always sure. thought that all of us were adopted. So we have an interesting combination of genes going on. Yeah, I'm looking at his face right now. There's a picture of him on the micro on the refrigerator, and he looks straight up white. He's white as he, can be. He's got red hair, yeah. white skin. Pale. He always sunburned in the summers. Yeah. I would tan. Um, so my dad is half Japanese, his mom is half Japanese, mm -hmm. our grandpa is full Japanese, right. our grandma is English yeah. mainly, and then mm -hmm. my mom is all kinds of European, like French and mm -hmm. uh, I think some Dutch, uh, English, there's a lot of English, maybe some Irish. What about you? Uh, my dad's side of the family is predominantly Swedish mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Danish. So there's Swedish and Danish and then English from the Wakamatsu side, and then Japanese. Yeah. So we have different f feelings about it, mm -hmm. um, but it is a pertinent issue, especially nowadays, as we see more and more Rick's ma mix, uh, Rick's maze. Mixed, uh, Rick's maze. Rick's maze. As we <laughs> see more uh, mixed race people in America being a melting mm -hmm. pot that it is. It's become more fashionable, more trendy, and more accepted. Yeah. You see it in advertising. Yeah. You it see it in movies. It wasn't so trendy when I was yeah. growing up. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you don't mind, let me just explain briefly sure, as ahead. to what I'm talking about. I grew up with a lot of uh, teasing and stuff from um, classmates, neighborhood kids, once they found out that I was a quarter Japanese. And, you know, I have the Asian, Asian ghetto pass, so I can say words like chink or jap, and you can't accuse me of, of being racist. It still kind of stings to hear it, though, for me at least. Yeah, like, but oh. I, mean, I, could, I mean, I could say it like, I mean, if like a black person could use the N-word, I can, I can mm -hmm. say chink and jap and, and not have someone say, you, you don't have permission to say those words. Yes, man, I do. I can say it. <laughs> I have 25% permission. I got permission. So, growing up, a lot of times I would encounter questions. I'm sure Angie has encountered this question, like, you know, what are you? You know, what, what nationality yeah, are you? Yeah, they say, what nationality? And I say, I'm American. American. They go, well, no, you know like, what, I, what mean. Are, I mean, you know, like, what are you? My ethnic background? I say, like, My what do you mean, like, heritage? racially? And I said, well, I'm a, I'm a quarter Japanese. And they go, oh, you're not Mexican? No. <laughs> No, you're not Italian? No, no. I'm none of those things. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I'm none of those things. But there was all these weird layers to it because I didn't quite fit in completely with the white people because they knew I wasn't completely Caucasian. And I wasn't... Um, I wasn't... It's just so annoying that I didn't want to distract from the video. Sorry about that. That was my phone. I just threw it across the room because I don't want you guys to hear my phone going off in the background. It's very disrespectful of me. Sorry. But I knew that there was some weird layers to it in that I didn't quite fit in with the Caucasian crowd because they knew that it was kind of 85% trust me, but 15% not want to be... I always feel like they had some inside thing that they wouldn't, 15% inside thing they wouldn't talk to me about. So they would share with me 85% of their lives, but I wasn't 100% white, not white enough to be 100% best friends with them. And, of course, I didn't fit in with the Asian crowd either because I didn't look 
completely Asian. So, but then there's this other thing, which is kind of being mixed race. So there's the white, there's the Asian, and then there's this other. So there's three things going on. And I apologize for those of you who are mixed race or may say, well, you should be proud of your heritage and you shouldn't be saying like that or feel bad about that. But I'm just telling the truth of how I felt growing up and the culture I grew up in is I felt like a part of me was dirty. Like there was an unpure, unclean part of me. I was tainted somehow that something, you know, some ingredient got thrown into the stew that wasn't supposed to be there. And it was a big source of uh, discomfort with me. Angie didn't experience that for reasons, so much, I guess, for reasons that she'll explain to you here in a minute. But I, I had a lot of, there's a lot of times where people would say I was a Jap or, oh, you're, you're a chink? You know, hey, hey, oh, you're a chink, huh? Or Bruce Lee, they call me Bruce Lee. Um, my name's actually, my last name's actually Lee. You probably know that. But they would find out I was part Asian and it was like, oh, you're Bruce Lee. Or they go, oh, you know, do some kind of stupid thing, you know? And I've gotten to a few fights in grade school because of the, you know, or in the, with the neighborhood kids. And so I always felt that even with my own family, I detected a kind of an undercurrent of shame in that they knew that they weren't 100% white. And they really, to a, a like a hyper degree, embraced the Caucasian culture in the conservative, Republican, traditional American in that they're gun-toting, you know, almost like kind of hillbillies in a way, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but they are very much trying to identify with being white uh, so that no one could ever say that you're not one of us. Because uh, our grandfather was placed in an internment camp with the rest of his family for a period of time uh, during the World War. Uh, actually, while he was in the military, which is interesting because my uh, our grandfather is a World War II veteran. Uh, he's highly decorated, was a uh, second lieutenant in the Corps of Engineers in the Army. And they still put him in an internment camp because of the war with uh, the Axis powers, namely Japan after Pearl Harbor. So they put him in an internment camp, and I think that the family growing up being half Japanese, this is my estimation, growing up half Japanese and half white during a time of conflict with another country, they couldn't fully embrace the Japanese side, so they chose to distance themselves to a degree uh, from that and embrace the Caucasian, traditional, white, conservative, Republican values of everything that is on the right. Anything that has anything to do with right, they're Trump lovers, they're gun lovers, they're all about some W, some, some tourists, we're going to smoke them tourists out of their caves. You know, they're very much, uh, anything that comes out of the right, uh, as far as pol politics, man, they're, they're going to quickly identify with that. They're going to be like, yep, that's the truth. <laughs> Hyper-religious, you know, there's this religiosity that's super prevalent. And I think, in my opinion, this is my opinion, I don't know what Angie's opinion is, I always felt that it was because there was this underlying shame uh, of not being completely pure. Uh, <clears throat> as we're talking about white people. Also, I noticed that they would embrace the Japanese culture, but not out in public. They wouldn't be like pro-Japanese out in public, but they would do just enough to not seem like they were ashamed of it. Well, we'll eat sushi once a month, or maybe we'll wear a kimono once a year, or just enough to be like, oh, we're part Japanese. Okay, we've got that over with, and let's go back to being white again. And I thought that was something. I, I always felt that there was kind of more so with different family members with other ones. You know, some people were less ashamed, others people were more ashamed. But there was this kind of we're not quite pure thing that I picked up on. I also uh, appropriated myself for whatever reason and felt that I wasn't completely pure. So I have mixed feelings on it. I feel better about it now than I did. Uh, I used to not like it at all. In fact, Actually, it got to the point where I even told people I was Mexican because I was just, <laughs> I did, did. I did. In, in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. I told everybody in eighth grade I was Mexican. 
because I didn't want them to know that I was uh, part Asian because once I let them know I was part Asian, then comes the chink stuff, then comes the Jap stuff, and then comes the, like, they go, oh, yeah, you know, they do that thing, and then I got to get to another fight, and so... <laughs> Um, I got to get another fight with a neighborhood kid. And so I, and especially when I went to prison, then it became really different because I, they, the white people, it's all very gang oriented and racial and it's segregated into three groups. You have the whites, the blacks and the Hispanics, and you have to fit into one of these three categories. I never saw an Asian man in prison. <laughs> there was no Asian, Asian gangs. There was no Tokyo drift there. Anyway, <laughs> so I had to be white. And, but they would always be like, well, you're not all the way white. Are you, what are you? And I'd be like, well, I'm a quarter Japanese. And they're like, oh, okay, but you're not Mexican, right? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Well, you're not Mexican though, right? Okay, okay, good. Because, yeah, and so I had to identify with being 100% white. So even in prison, I got another message of not being able to be uh, Asian at all. So what do you think about that, Angie? So that was my That's experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me, I grew up in different countries, so I was always kind of out of place. I was always the new girl and didn't belong. And so, I mean, I grew up in Japan and Korea, mm-hmm. so uh, I, I don't know. I guess I was, I was kind of the white girl there, and yeah, people would ask me, like, what's your nationality? And I'd say American, and they'd say, no, you know, what's your ethnicity? And they'd say, I'm part Japanese, and they go, oh, okay, I can see it in the eyes. Yeah, and... Um, I guess I grew up, I think my parents kind of instilled a sense of pride or like it's kind of unique and cool to be part Japanese. Um, So I don't think I grew up feeling very much shame. Only I do feel like I was treated differently because I didn't have these big, blue, innocent looking eyes. I was kind of treated more like, hmm, what's she up to? Like not as trusted because of how I looked. Yeah. I definitely know what you mean by that. Yeah, so, and then there's nothing you can do about it, but we've noticed, and a lot of you guys have noticed, how in Asian advertising, they'll even put, like, they'll sell, like, the skin whitening creams, uh, colored contacts, Mm -hmm. tape, and, like, things to, like, make it so you have, like, the double eyelid, the Caucasian-looking eyelid. Yeah, because I, sometimes, if you notice, my eyelids, well, they're not doing it now, thankfully, but they'll flip over, let me see if I can do it. Make it. There you go. See that? See how it flips over and you can't see the top eyelid? And I would push it in so that you could... There you go. So I look more white. <laughs> but she yeah. can't do that. I can't do that. Sometimes if I've been crying a lot, it'll swell up and it'll look like I have a more Caucasian eye. Or sometimes when mm-hmm. I wake up, it's... You know, they mm-hmm. kind of do what they want to do. But for yeah. the most part, I have a very Asian-looking eye. Mm-hmm. And... Um, you know, I They're pretty beautiful can't, can't do anything about that, I think. Isn't she have the beautiful, most beautiful eyes you've ever seen? <laughs> if you could uh, see them at all. But we were talking about that today in that in downtown Dallas, they have, you know, just like in, you know, little Tokyo or Chinatown, they have advertising. And stuff. So they have areas of Dallas that are strictly Vietnamese. And I noticed that while walking through the Vietnamese section, like if you go into a, a grocery store, they have a lot of advertisements uh you know, Vietnamese advertisements and all, and like for cell phones, for food, for jewelry, whatever it is, credit cards or, or not credit, like prepaid debit cards. And they, the models they choose are all very, uh, the most Caucasian looking Vietnamese people you're going to find. Mm-hmm. Like they look half, they look like they're not full they're Asian. Not gonna have I don't think they are full skin. Asian. I don't think they are full Asian. I think they really specifically choose people who are half. Um, Asian, half white, to portray this kind of more Caucasianish look. And in Asian countries, the more Caucasian you look, the more attractive you're considered. Mm-hmm. The more straight up Asian you are, with the squinty eye and maybe the big, bigger lip and the flatter nose and the, and the rounder face. You know, the 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 moon face is is uh, so uh, derogatorily called. They don't like, they want to have a more chiseled face, the more oval face. Yeah, and so we've noticed that a lot of Asians seem to have an inferiority complex Mm -hmm. to Caucasians. And I noticed this when I was dating my ex-husband, who's Mm -hmm. Cambodian. He, at first when we were dating, he's just like, wow, you're a white girl. Like, this was a status symbol for him. Like, I've never Mm -hmm. dated a white girl before. This is amazing, white, wow, you know. And didn't like me getting freckles, because all freckle on the sun... He did not like that. He wanted white. 
Why is could be? White is Here, better. Put this cream on. Put this whitening cream on. So get this Michael Jackson whitening cream on. Yes, that's not. It's true. He did have vitiligo, but he also did use whitening creams to blend it out. Anyway, so that's terrible. Here, I don't like your freckles. That's, that's yeah. A so this evil Asian message. inferiority complex is is crazy. They have this like what is it called? I mean, there's people that have. There's Americans that have like the. Right? And then well, it's what's called cinephilia or cinephobia, fear of uh, anything then, Asian. There's the people that like Asian, you know, yeah. they're all about the anime and, mm -hmm. and Harajuku and all that. Cinephilia. But then it goes the other way around, and a lot of Asians yeah. love white people like, and white yeah, things. Yeah, if you go to Japan, to them. Japan's J Japanese people love American stuff. They are they love <laughs> base, baseball root, you know, they're all about the baseball, about anything that has anything to do with Americans. They love Americans. They put English words on oh, their sure. clothes. They, it could say like F you, but they wouldn't know it and they, they would buy it. it. <laughs> they it's, would love it's, it. Because it's in English, so they don't even know that it says like, you know, dirty poo rag or something. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know. Oh, I got the dirty poo ragu. You know, and they're like, oh, I got this American duty paru. You know, duty poo ragu. It's so good, you know. And then, anyway, yeah, so, so they, they even adopt American words and just add ru on the end. You know, like karu. Like, you know, that's what a car is called in uh, Japan. It's called a karu. Is it really? you know, yeah. They have three alphabets the hiragana which is, you know, basic words. And mm -hmm. then the kanji is like the Chinese symbols. Mm -hmm. And then the katakana is sure. for foreign words. Yeah. So anything in katakana would be American words, mm -hmm. mainly American words. So I think it's interesting that, you know, the Asian people... Well, I mean, if you look at the history of it, you know, if you look at the uh, domination by, you know, f uh, by Western society on China during their attempt to be... Uh, um, when they became an imperialist country during the Opium Wars with Britain, Britain came in and shut that down uh, because they did they uh, did not want that to happen. In fact, I believe that they traded off all of their pepper uh, for opium. That became the main trade. And so when then also after the World War II, during the Reconstruction uh, after the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. American came in, and so there's a lot of Western influence at a time when we saw that the Eastern countries were beginning to have power and a say-so on the world stage. We came in to Westernize them, and so there was this big... If you've seen the movie The Last Samurai with, with Tom Cruise, you know that the whole movie was centered around this shift from the old traditional samurai Eastern uh, tribal clan culture to a westernized civilization, and they felt that, uh, the emperor at the time felt that by moving towards a western civilization, western culture, that they would be able to prosper more. And so they embraced this uh, white uh, superiority, Asian superiority was suppressed and looked at as Asian inferiority, and anything white was looked at as advanced, progressive, uh, clean, that's what you wanna do, is you wanna be like the western people, and so you see a suppression uh, of the Asian culture. And it's still continues today. And so it's a very complex issue. And that, I mean, that is the history uh, and some of the explanation as to how that happened with Asian cultures. But there's also, I mean, we see a lot of weird complex issues with, with African Americans, with mixed race people who are part black, part white, or part part black, part Asian. And so there's a lot of different other things that I know people with mixed race can, uh, they can identify with and they can, they understand exactly what we're saying. Although the, the background isn't exact historically, but it's similar in the same, you know, the same way that it, it, it occurred um, and how it affects them. So it certainly is an interesting topic and nowadays, because we see more blending of the races, we see more of a uh, you know a globalist type thing. We see more of a unification of the world. We see more uh, population movements, people coming into America, us going in. There's a more blending of the the ethnicities, and so it's more accepted now. But it creates for this other weirder kind of different thing, which isn't quite this race. It's not quite that race. It's this other third pole. 
Mm -hmm. You know, you have this polar thing here, this polar thing here, and then you have this middle third pole, which is its own thing that creates its own complex issues that are separate from uh, the this or the that. And it'll become more interesting as more people become blended race, and it'll be a question of like, well, you know, what is race now? Like, what does it mean? If everybody had sex and everybody got together and had children, well, imagine what that human would look like it would kind of look kind of brownish and there would be a mixture of everybody uh <laughs> that would be an interesting looking thing to see like what it would look like if everybody just mixed around and there was no yeah. borders like that or or desire to maintain this ethnic identity like by marrying people that looked like each other that we just decide you know we're just going to blend around and, and so in the future when that occurs it would probably be uh, a darker skinned I would say a middle skinned person because you got real white over here, you got black over here, you got Asian, you got all these different things. So create kind of an olive skinned person with maybe, I don't know, it'd be interesting to see, but we're seeing it happen. Yeah, so if Michael and I have another baby, mm -hmm. our baby would be 25% Japanese That's like right. us. Mm -hmm. And we'll see what he or she looks like. Let's see what's cooking. Mm. Good looking. Okay, so there you go. There's that. There might make more on that because it's really, it's something that I personally, as you could see by my, my rant, I could talk about it endlessly because it is complex and it feeds into a lot of other geopolitical things. And so it's a very, that's just the tip of the iceberg when we're talking about mixed race. Yeah, so thank you for watching. Mm -hmm, thank you. And have a good day. We love you.